In the UK, we have two main weight loss drugs. These are semaglutide and tazepatide. Now you might be thinking, I've heard a different name to that. And that's because these are the drug or chemical names and then they're sold under lots of different brand names. Let's take semaglutide first of all. Semaglutide is sold as a Zempic, Wegovi and Ribelsis. And all these different brand names have different licenses. So the license is what the drug is intended for. All three of these brands are sold by the same drug company and they are all the drug semaglutide. So let's look at a Zempic first. Azempic is a once weekly injection of semaglutide intended to help people with type 2 diabetes. However, you will meet people who are on Azempic for weight loss and that's because doctors can prescribe these medications off license or off label. This literally means prescribing them beyond their intended scope and it's not only legal, it's incredibly common for doctors to do this. So you do meet lots of patients who've been on Azempic for weight loss. However, Novo Nordisk then brought out Wegovi, which again is semaglutide, same, it's a once a week injection, and this time it's licensed for patients for weight loss. Interestingly, if you Google which is better, Azempic or Wegovi for weight loss, you'll find that places say Wegovi, in clinical trials, Wegovi does better. And that's because even though they're both semaglutide, Wegovi you can get at higher doses than you can get Azempic. Then we have Ribelsis, which is an oral tablet that you take every day. And obviously, because it's not an injection, it's very popular. Again, it's licensed for treatment of people with type 2 diabetes, but doctors have used it off license to treat people for obesity. However, just over a year or so ago, supplies of this medication in the UK rang low, so there was a patient safety alert, which means that doctors are not allowed to prescribe Ribelsis off license for obesity, and it can only currently be used for type 2 diabetes. So those are all semaglutide. Semaglutide is available on the NHS here in the UK, but now let's move over to tazepatide, which is the second drug, and this is sold as Munjaro. Munjaro is a once a week injection. It's licensed for the treatment of obesity. It is not currently available on the NHS here in the UK. So if you're somebody who is struggling with obesity and you're wondering, do I go on semaglutide or do I go on tazepatide? Let me briefly explain how these medications work because in clinical trials, tazepatide has been shown to help participants lose more weight than semaglutide. Both semaglutide and tazepatide mimic a hormone in the body that we all naturally make. It's a hormone called GLP-1 and when we eat it's given off by the small intestine and the small amounts of the places. We're not going to get too sciencey today. But this GLP-1 comes from the gut and it goes to the stomach and tells the stomach to let food move that little bit more slowly. It goes to the pancreas and gets the pancreas to give off insulin and it goes to our brain and tells us that we're full. And the way the drug does this is by stimulating the same receptors that the GLP-1 hormone does. So when we stimulate a receptor, we call that a receptor agonist, which is why semaglutide and tazepatide are referred to as GLP-1 receptor agonists. So that's how semaglutide works and in part how tazepatide works. But tazepatide has a second hormones receptor that it acts on. And this is the receptor for the hormone GIP, which has two different names. I'll put them down below. So tazepatide works on two hormone receptors, whereas semaglutide works on one. And this might account for why participants in studies lose more weight on tazepatide than they usually do on semaglutide. And coming through trials at the moment, there are even more drugs, not even just with double action, but actually triple or more mechanisms of action. So it'll be interesting to see what comes out over the next few years. So that's how these medications work. There will be some people saying, oh, there's other weight loss medications out there. There's a drug called Orlistat, which is often sold under the brand name Ally. We're not covering that in today's video. That's been out for a very, very long time. It's a different sort of medication completely. But when it comes to these GLP-1 receptor agonist medications, the whole purpose of these is to support you to get into a calorie deficit. I have so many people in the comments of my videos saying that they've gone on these medications and they're not losing weight. And it's true, they don't work for everyone. And it's important that people realise these medications might not work for them. One of the ways you can increase the likelihood of going on this medication and it working is working out exactly why you struggle with your weight. So before I started one of these medications, I was trying to work out why can I not beat my weight? What is the problem? And I realized that my drivers to eat were very odd and GLP-1 medications target your drivers to eat. So 
these medications address the problem for me. But what we fail to understand in medicine, what so many doctors are completely unaware of, and many people in the generic population, is that everyone who is overweight is overweight for very different reasons. And so it might be that going on a GLP-1 medication does not address the reason that you're overweight. Another reason people might not lose weight on these medications is if they've got an underlying health issue like an underactive thyroid, which is why I always say to people before you go on this medication and spend a lot of money, go and see your doctor and check there's nothing else going on. And the third reason that people might not lose weight on these medications is that they're not in a calorie deficit. As I said, in order to lose weight on these medications, you need to be in a calorie deficit. If you don't understand calories, if you don't know what you should and shouldn't be eating, these medications might not work for you. They might be able to support you a bit while you try and work it out, but these are medications with risk. And if you can do it without the medication, that's always gonna be desirable. But as a doctor, when I had patients come to me and say, I'm not losing weight on these medications, the first thing I'd ask them to do is a food diary, track their macros, particularly their calories, and see if they really are in a deficit, because more often than not, they're actually not. Another huge factor to consider if you're going on one of these medications is that they are considered lifelong for the treatment of obesity. Obesity is considered a chronic disease, which means a long-term health issue. And so if you're thinking, I'll go on this medication for a few weeks and months, get the weight off and then stop it, we know the majority of people who come off the medication regain the majority of their weight. And I've talked more specifically about this in a previous video where I've gone through a study about it. The problem is there are a lot of people who don't really appreciate this or who feel that if they use the medication to suppress their appetite to zero so that they can effectively crash diet, which we all know isn't healthy, and then stop it and they'll be fine, they're likely to find that doesn't work. Being on a GLP-1 medication just facilitates you to be in a calorie deficit. And for me, it's really hard work <laughs> to try and do my diet every day, to reset my habits, to go to different foods. And so to know that patients are going on these medications, spending the money, putting all the effort in, but don't have a realistic expectation of the endpoint is really hard. Now, I as an individual, I'm going to try and come off these medications. I'm trying to see if I reset my habits and what I eat and do that for a sustained period and then come off if I can keep the weight off, that would be great. I do understand with this medication, there is a chance that I may need to stay on it for life. That is something that I appreciate and that is expensive to continue doing but I know that's a possibility. I also know that if I come off it, I may regain all of the weight. And most people who go on a GLP-1 medication do come off it at some point, despite all the advice that it's a long-term medication. And that might be due to side effects and problems they experience with the medication, or it might be due to expense particularly in the US where this stuff is really expensive. I've seen plenty of people in the US who've initially got it on insurance and then not been able to get it. Uh, in the UK, sometimes people can time out with NHS care and not get things long. There's lots of developments to come, I think, in the field of GLP-1 receptor agonists, but I will see you very soon in my next video. I want to talk a lot more about doctors' attitudes around these medications and doctors' attitudes around weight loss and obesity, because I think some of the figures are pretty shocking. So yeah, see you guys soon.